popping, y'all. It's your boy, Staz, the Italian Stallion, a.k.a. ESPN Staz, because I'm bringing it to you like a highlight, you feel me? You right here at Easy Way Too Active with another definition of active episode, man. It's hot as a motherfucker outside, man. This shit is so crazy doing these interviews during the daytime, man. I love it, but man, it's hot as a motherfucker, man, for real. Yo, Arizona, I got a very special guest in the building tonight. You know what I mean? He's been at this for a long time. You know, when I say a minute, he's been hooping for a minute. You know, um, some might say he's under the radar. But, you know, if you really look into this man, he's been really doing his shit for years, bro. Like, really hooping. A big-time hooper, bro. Um, You know, Arizona, you know, basketball, a big-time hooper. Um, I got Davin White in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Happy to be here, man. Yes, I sir. Yes, you, sir. Uh, bringing me on, man. Uh, super excited for this. This is uh, my second podcast, actually. I second podcast it. ever? Ever, man. Like, I thought I started, I wanted to do my own, but I got to start somewhere, right? No, yeah. facts, facts. And uh, I want to shout out Debo Lottie Maserati. Yes, sir. My dog, you feel me, for uh, I mean, putting me on to you. You feel me? Because I didn't have any idea who you were until, uh, you know, the homie put me on was like yo you should check boy out and i was like all right bet. he was like, oh you know and then we gonna get into what he he told me about something you did back in the day and i was like oh for real and uh i was like, oh shit for sure well let me look into what's going on and you know i did my research you know and kind of took a dive into you know what i could find on you and i was like, okay dude dude is dude is an og is at this shit yeah, yeah. at this basketball shit you feel me so you know, once again, it's a pleasure to have you in here. And I think people need to know your story. Yeah. You feel me? Because you've been through a lot and seen a lot. Yeah. It's, 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 been a, it's been definitely a journey, man. I've been all over the world, man. Mexico, Germany, Israel. I've been all over the place, man. Mm-hmm. So, like, anything you want to touch on, you want to ask me, I'm here, man. Hell yeah. For sure. For sure. So, uh, to get started, man, obviously, you know, this, this, this show is, you know, uh, tailored, you know, primarily to, you know, the Southwest and Arizona, you feel me? Um, we, we spread more nationally, you know, throughout the, the country, but you know, it's, it's primarily Arizona. That's who we cater to. So I want to ask you, man, like, you know, where did you grow up in Arizona, man? Where are you from out here? South Phoenix, man. Actually right with street, uh, 21st street Broadway, man. 21st born, street Broadway. Born and raised, man. Running on the South side. I've been over there. Like I said, since born and raised, like raised by my grandma, man. Her house is still over there. Been standing up for, <laughs> so hold on, what, forty now. Whew. Yeah, it's still there, man. So I was born and raised on the south side. Uh, but I got love everywhere, man. West, mm-hmm. south, north, east. Like I got love for everybody, though. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Shout out to the south side, man. I mean, just from music to athletes. I mean, it's it's been you know a, a great place, you know. Great place for talent to come out of Arizona. Southside Phoenix, man. Salute to y'all. Um, so did you go to uh um South Mountain? Yeah, so the story on that is I went to South Mountain for uh South Mountain High School for my first two years, so my freshman and sophomore year, and then your boy wasn't I I I'd rather be in a gym than in school, so it's too close to home. Like the the salvation army was like right up the street from the crib, so I was like, you know what, I'm too as much as I love basketball, I wouldn't go to school. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I hopped my butt over there to the north and it made me sit still. You know what I mean? I couldn't go to the salvation army, go play basketball to leave school, you know what I mean? So that kinda it was kinda a self discipline thing, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I had to, it was it was basically a personal choice. It wasn't nothing it wasn't nothing personal. It was more like a decision that I had to make to graduate. You know what I mean? I wasn't on pace to graduate my first two years. Like, I wasn't going to school. I wasn't going to classes. I was just going to the games. And it was funny, though. <laughs> I think my sophomore year, I was playing varsity, and I had missed, like, the whole day of school. And we had a game that day. Mm-hmm. And the teacher knew we had a game. So the teacher showed up to the game like, hey, uh, you want to play the game, but you ain't come to class today. So yeah. After the game, the coach pulled me to the side. I was like, hey, you can't do that anymore. You got to go to class. And I was like, I just, I just, yeah. Just one of those situations, man. No, facts. <laughs> facts. And North, for those that don't know, North High School is off of Thomas, right? Yeah, Thomas and 12th Street. 12th Street and Thomas, yes, sir. You know, and that's a, that's, that's a pretty legendary high school out yeah, here. Yeah. 
Lots of big time athletes have come through there. I've played there, you know what I mean? Uh back in the day and shit. Yeah. They've they've had some uh pretty good games over there for sure. So um after North High School, you know, uh I read that you went to go play at Chandler Gilbert Community College. What made you want to start there? Uh so the story behind that is like my fresh so my freshman year at South, my coach was uh Coach Chapman. So Ch- Coach Chapman left my freshman year, going into my sophomore year. So he was the co- he was the reason I was playing varsity my freshman year. Like he was kind of like mentoring me and coaching me up, and he ended up getting a job at Chandler Gilbert. So when I was finished with high school, he was at Chandler Gilbert. So it was an easy transition to go over there. And plus, like I said, like I w- I fell so far behind in school, I had to go JUCO first. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that was a perfect spot for me. He knew how I played. I knew how he coached, mm-hmm. and it was just it was just chemistry straight off the bat. That's what's up. Shout out to Chandler Gilbert, man. You know, that's my hometown, Chandler, Arizona. <laughs> yes, sir. You know what I mean? I mean, I didn't grow up near there. I grew up in the city, like downtown Chandler. Mm-hmm. But you feel me? That's where, like, a lot of people that I know went there. You know what I mean? But, you know, I think as an athlete, sometimes starting out at that junior college or community college level, I think is good to, you know, get you more prepared. You feel me? for for the next level yeah i agree man i I think like nowadays you got the the prep schools you know what i mean like back then it wasn't like arizona would probably maybe if maybe had one prep school prep was more on the east coast you know Mm -hmm. it started moving towards and and then california a little bit but it started moving towards the west coast more as basketball went on now you come out here it's probably like Five or six prep schools in Arizona. Prep schools, yeah, you know I know. Like I mean? Hillcrest is out here. Yeah, it's it's a it's it's prep school now. So like, like I said, we didn't have that when I was coming up. It was more like either go J- J- JUCO or sit out a year. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I decided to go JUCO. Um, had an amazing JUCO career. Uh, Chandler Gilbert. Uh, we was actually playing at the hangar. You know where the hangar at the uh, Williams Air Force Base. Yeah, yeah. So we used to play in a little small gym. Now they got a, like a built gym, nice gym on campus. Like we used to have to drive all the way to like Powell Road, all the way back to Chandler. Like it was just, it was a lot, man. It was, it was a big transition for me. I mean, I was the good thing I was away from home. You know yeah. what I mean? Like so, mm-hmm. it was fun, man. Like you said, like like now you go to Chandler Gilbert, like. When we was out there, it was nothing but cows, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it smelled yeah. like manure out there, you know yeah. what I mean. So now it's all built up, and I think that uh, what they got going over there is beautiful, man. The gym is nice. Everything they did moving forward past the years I played, and it's, it's special out there. You go there now, it's a nice facility, mm-hmm. weight room, all that stuff. Like we used to, <laughs> we used to be at the Air Force Base, and they had like a track and field out there. So that's that was where we worked out at. You yeah, know? we was on the track and field doing weights. Yeah. Like, it was it was, it was was a grind out there, man. The Coyotes, right? The Coyotes, yep. man. Yeah, Coyotes. Well, funny story about that. Like, uh, so when we used to play, they used to have a wolf howling. Mm-hmm. I mean, a Coyote. Oh, every time we scored, <laughs> it was the funniest shit ever, man. Hell yeah. That's yeah. what's up. I think I had a couple homies uh, from my class that went and played there a couple of years. Um, you know, like I said, it's always a good area. A good, uh, you know, a good school to go, you know, touch up on your skills and, and kind of figure out where you want to go in the future as a, as a hooper and all that. So um, you played at South Mountain North High School, you know what I mean? And then you went to Chandler Gilbert for two years, you know, um, put some touches on your game. And then things started to really kind of pick up for you. So after Chandler Gilbert, you went to Cal State Northridge and you played your college, the rest of your college ball there. Um, why did you pick, was that like, why did you pick that school and did you have other schools like contacting you? Yeah. So out of high school, like I was heavily recruited. Like I had Miami, Georgia Tech. I had a lot of Pac-10 schools. I had all that. But like I said, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't a bookie. You uh-huh. know what I, mean? I, I'm, I was basketball, 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 school second. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's why I tell kids now, like without school, you can't go to those you colleges. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So. With Cal State Northridge, uh, got in contact with them. They actually came to one of our games to recruit another guy, and I cooked him. And 
they was like, yo, we want him. <laughs> and then they found out my situation as far as, like, I had to sit out, like, a half a semester to be eligible to play in the season. So the coach pulled me to the side, and, like, we started chopping it up. And they kind of helped me, man. So my loyalty was more to them than the other coaches. The other coaches, like the big schools, they got so many, so many kids that, that, you know what I'm saying, with good grades. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I take a kid with good grades, even though he more talented. So they was passing, looking over me, and they wanted me to get my my finish my A or whatever before they can even give me a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Chandler Gilbert was already giving me – I mean, Cal State Northridge already offered me a scholarship, and they all, they, they they had me set up where they was going to put me in school to finish my A. I only need a semester. Mm -hmm. So they moved me – I moved to Cali for, like, the first semester. They put me in school. Got my A, so I was already committed to them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As soon as I, as soon as they found out, as soon as the other colleges found out I was eligible, they came calling. But I was, I'm, I'm a loyal person. Like, mm -hmm. you did this for me. You know what I mean? The least I can do is stay. Mm -hmm. and I, I belong at a bigger school, but mm -hmm. my loyalty was to, to Cal State Northridge, so that's why I ended up going there. You know, it's a small school. That's what's up. Yeah. yeah and what, what, uh. What conference was that in? Uh, Big West. The Big West. Yeah, the Big West. Hey, man, that's that's mid major. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mid major. It might be. I think that's mid major. It could be mid major or lower major. Low major. Regardless, it's major. <laughs> it's a major. <laughs> it's a major. D one, bro. Yeah, that's right. You know, like I said, I, like I was always told coming up, you know, hooping and stuff is like, yo, you got to be on a certain type of level to get looks for for that. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's that's a D one. That's a top. That's a big D one school. Yeah. Regardless, yeah. you know what I mean? California State, Northridge, and, and that's where in California? Northridge, like, where is that? That's like, they, they, I want to say the valley, but it's not, it's like, you know, it's like Orange County-ish. Orange County yeah, area? It's like it's like over there, it's like, they call it the hills, like, I, mm -hmm. I couldn't even tell you, it's been so long. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, I used to go out there all the time, but I know we used to fly in, uh, I mean, it's close to Burbank. Okay, there. got you. Yeah, it's off in that area, so got it, you. it was... It was it was a nice area though, like it was real chill, real laid back. It wasn't a big see. This what I what I didn't like about it. It wasn't a big sports school. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's more like it was like a chill. Like so many school, big schools in California: yeah. UCLA, USC. You mm -hmm. got all the big schools, Stanford. You got all these big schools, and yeah. and Cali, we kind of fall on the ra uh, the radar. You know what I mean? So they had. I think the year I came, they had just ex the uh, football program. So. Wow. It was a, it was a it was a transition from like being one of the big sports schools and not having a football team because you know football team gonna bring fans out like the football yeah. players mm -hmm. gonna come to the games and they just bring a, a, a larger crowd and yeah once they X that it was like kind of like basketball you know what I mean like mm -hmm. but it wasn't a big fan base so I think that I think that was the biggest thing about that school like the fan base wasn't as big as I thought it would be got you well how, what, well how was your experience playing there like how did you like playing in that in that conference you know how was the the games like so uh, i hate to, I'm, I'm not a complainer man but i was more of like an open court get to the basket and that 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 league everybody plays on mm. you know what i mean so it forced me to it forced me to like learn to shoot i wasn't mm -hmm. a shooter in high school like if they, if you ask anybody like i used to just dunk everything get to the mm -hmm. basket i was just fast and I didn't have, like, the best shot. But, like, once I got to college, they started playing zones. I had to learn how to shoot, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I, like, got me a shooting coach and did all the, like, the hard work to get in that. And now, now I don't even pass the three-point line. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> all I do is shoot threes now. But, <laughs> yeah, so, like, I think that conference is, like, it's a good conference because uh, I think, uh, what's the guard that went to Miami? I mean, they play at Miami, the point guard, Vincent. Yeah, I think he went mm -hmm. to Gabe Vincent. Yeah, he played in the big. I, I think mm -hmm. he played in the Big West out there. So yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely talent out there. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? But like I said, you fall under the radar when you playing mm -hmm. the zone defense is all. You, yeah, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. so, but just the just the culture and, and the brotherhood we had there. Like I had a good a lot of good friends there. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was like four or five of us that was in the same grade. So we kind of like went junior and senior year together. So shout out to them. Uh, my boy Ambo Allen and Joe Fraser, man, R.I.P. Mm -hmm. uh, my boy Ito, yeah. I mean, I don't know if y'all gonna see this, but shout out to them. That, that was like that was my brothers, man. So, mm -hmm. and I always try to keep contact to this day. I reach out to them, you know. Mm -hmm. what I mean? So, no, that's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Shout out, shout out to them. And you know, I mean, obviously, you know, you was you was you was balling over there. 
you know, and and turning heads with your with your style of play. You know, just from what I've seen, you know, you said you used to drive to the hoop a lot, but from what I've seen, like, you know, you really could shoot it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could really shoot it, but you're also very, uh, very scrappy too, you know what I mean? And really kind of, you know, ha- have that toughness, you know what I mean? Even though you could shoot, you know, you still take it to the lane, find the open man. Yeah. You know what so I mean? <laughs> it's funny you said that. Like my mom from uh, from the Bronx. Uh huh. You know what I mean? I think they they try to say I get that rough side from the from the East Coast. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She she born and raised in the Bronx, and uh, my dad was out here. So okay, they trying to think I got it from her. You know, what I mean? mm-hmm. <laughs> that little rough side to me. But uh, I always played with a chip on my shoulder, man. Like I always felt like, and you know, growing up, growing up on the South Side, like we ain't. You know what I'm saying? We ain't supposed to make it out like we supposed to make mm-hmm. it out. You know what I mean? So I always had that chip on my shoulder, like. And I was always, like, the small guy out there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I had to play with a chip on my shoulder, like, until I got older. Then I started – then I was, then I got bouncy, you know what I mean? Bouncy, so, yeah. yeah. So, like, I always been scrappy, man. And, like, and I, I love to compete, man. And I think that's the biggest quality I have, like, to this day. Like, even though I'm a little older, like, I love to compete. Like, I don't, like – You'll never catch me playing in the 35 and older leagues and stuff yeah. like that. People call me, ask me, I'm not doing that, man. Put mm-hmm. me in with the young guys. You know yeah. I mean? like, yeah, you don't deserve to be doing that. Yeah, you know. like, yeah, and that's what I try to tell people. Like, it ain't no disrespect for what y'all doing and, and, and what y'all doing, but, like, you'll never catch me in that. Yeah, you'd average, like, 50 on them. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, yeah. That's funny, man. For sure, man. Well, yeah, that's what's up, man. Um, So, I want to I wanna get into the nitty-gritty, man. So, Cal State Northridge, obviously, you was balling, like I said. You was hooping out there, and you was, you know, raising some eyebrows. So when you finished Cal State Northridge, um, talk about where you went next. You went to Canada um, f- uh, for the team in Ni- Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, yeah. Mm-hmm. So after college, it's, it's I'm going to backtrack a little bit to college. So my senior year, uh, I was trying to get to the league. I knew I was good enough, and my coach – at the time, wasn't pushing me towards the league. Like, he wasn't trying to give me no looks with the league. And I'm like, yo, like – and, like, he was pushing another player, which he was he was a good player, but I felt like I was I was more league-ready than he was. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it kind of upset me, man. So, like, I left. Like, I left, like, as soon as the season was over, like, I did, like – I was in school or whatever. And then, like, he told me – he pulled me to his office one day, and he was like, hey, what are your plans going moving forward? I was like, yo, I'm trying to get to the league, like – I want a lead tryout, and he was like, well, I ain't got no lead tryouts for you, but I got some overseas teams that are looking at you. And, like, me being who I was at the time and not thinking, like, at the bigger picture now, like, I wish I could go back and change it in a in a way. Uh, I was like, Europe, overseas, I was like, man, I ain't going to play over. I'm, I'm going to the league. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, if you, feel like this, if you feel like this towards me after me playing with you all these years, like, you don't think – I'm good enough to get in front of these teams or give me an invite. Like, and that's all I wanted. And I was like, I got up and left, man. I was like, I'm up out of here, man. I can't do that. If you don't believe in me, the, the coach that's been coaching me this whole time, I can't do that because then I'll be selling myself short. So I didn't end up finishing my senior year. Uh, I ended up leaving, coming home. And I knew a lot of people and the people, a lot of people knew me. So I ran into this guy. I went to like a, it was like a camp for like, exposure camps you know mm-hmm. what i mean went to exposure camp ran into this agent and he had a team in the niagara falls you know what i mean he's like yeah we're putting a team together like i heard a lot of good things about you like we got a lot of players on this team that nba teams are looking at i'm like oh this is my now he's speaking my language you know what mm-hmm. i mean so i ended up going to niagara falls playing there uh i was there for like two months and a funny story i think i told you this the funny story i was uh the whole team down there, we were staying in a, a hotel that was being renovated. Mm-hmm. So it was like probably like eight or nine rooms that they had just mm-hmm. open and you know what I mean? And we wasn't getting paid nothing. Like I'm fresh out of college and like I wasn't hurting like for money, but like, you know what I'm saying? You in college, you ain't making no money coming mm-hmm. out. Now they got the, the them deals where you making the NIL. Yeah, yeah, you got all mm-hmm. that stuff now. Back then, boy, you was living off them financial aid checks. And for them, real. Yeah. And them, so – me fresh out of college, like my grandma always been like, I ain't gonna say she was rich, but she 
she took care of, like she handled the stuff I like the bills like phone bills and stuff so I ain't really had no bills coming out of college so mm-hmm. I had a, the I had enough leeway to go to uh Canada thinking I was supposed to get paid and I was down there for like two months we probably played like two games and, damn uh, two games we played two games man and we probably had the best they probably had like I want to say like 20, 20 teams and like before the season it started, like if you know about the CBA, like teams be folding. So anything about that, like so, like four or five teams folded before the season even started. Wow. So we ended up playing like one exhibition game against, uh, I think it was like Rochester. Mm-hmm. So we had to leave Canada, drive to uh, across the border, go to uh, Rochester. I think it was like three or four hours drive or whatever. Went over there played. They were supposed to be the best. They was ranked the number one team in our league. We smacked them so we was like oh yeah we gone mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying then they had like the knicks come watch us practice and stuff like that like it, it was getting big time you know what i mean but like i said the the, the league and the, our team ended up folding they weren't paying us so we was like they almost didn't get us flights home wow yeah it was crazy it was grimy out there then like they stopped feeding us because like the hotel they had racked up a bill so high at the hotel from feeding us but wasn't nobody paying them. So it's just like, wow, yo. And then crazy. it was like, yo, y'all got a week to get out the hotel. Like, it, it got grimy out there, man. So this, this is my start of my career. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, this this can't be it. Like, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So I get back uh, after Canada. It's beautiful, though. I was at Niagara Falls right on the border. Like, you see, like, the falls and that. We used to walk to the falls, check all that out. Like, it was beautiful mm-hmm. out there. Like, like I said, like, I would love to have played a full season there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And. It just didn't work out, so I ended up coming back home, and uh, and from there, I don't know if you want to talk about, like, I ended up going to Mexico. Mm-hmm. So I went from Canada, I was at home for like a week, this team from Mexico, they knew about me, heard about me, and that, that league is grimy. Mm-hmm. Like, four games a week. Wow. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday. Every Damn. Day, yeah. And I went out there and just, you know what I mean, they loved me, like, all I did was like Mexico, you go out there and dunk, you the man out there, you know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah. So I went out there dunking everything, man. They love me. And I like to this day, like that was probably like one of the best crowds I played in front of. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cananea, shout out to Cananea. Moneros, I love y'all, man. That's my that was my first home. What part of Mexico was that? It's in uh Cananea. Cananea. It's like, uh, Sonora, so it's like Sonora. Yeah. The so state of Sonora. Yeah, so okay. like it's you know where uh, – it's actually the border of Phoenix. Like, if you go – you know where Nogales is? Yeah. So, instead of you going to Nogales, you go left and you go through Douglas, Arizona. Mm-hmm. So, you go all through that way and it's like – it's like a border. Like, it's probably like 40 minutes from the border. So okay. Like that, yeah. So, it was – That was dope. Yeah. It was – it was – it was fun, man. Like, I had some good times out there. It was grimy out there, though. Like, and people don't understand that. Like, people think – like basketball, like after high school and college, like it's a business. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's like Mexico cutthroat. Anywhere you go is cutthroat. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So like you got to always bring your, your A game mm-hmm. or they going to send you packing. Yep. And like with Mexico and a place like that, like your your, your contracts ain't guaranteed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You do something bad, you have a bad game, you get hurt or something, they shipping you home. Wow. You know what I mean? Unless you like, unless they really fuck with you. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So. Wow. And I was just blessed to put get get put in a good situation. You know what I'm saying? I had some veterans around me, like my boy Galen Robinson. Man, he probably to this day he was probably the best center I ever played with. Galen Robinson. Galen Robinson. Galen Is he Robinson. from Arizona? Or no, no? he's from Houston. So he, okay. uh, yeah, he's from Houston. I think his dad. I think his dad played in the league. I would say Truck Robinson, but I really, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll yeah. be pushing it. I, I don't, uh-huh. don't want to. I don't want to say it. Mm-hmm. I know, but. Yeah, but his dad played in the league. He he was a monster though, man. He like six eight. Never mm-hmm. practiced. Just come to the, <laughs> like I promise you, he never showed never up to practice. practice. Never <laughs> practice. Come come get you twenty five and twenty every yeah. night. Yeah, it's like yo, I do this. I'm like yo, what? And I was mad. I was like, what are you doing here? Yeah, <laughs> you too good to be here. Like you should be in the league. But he he didn't want to practice. You know what yeah. I mean? Like and, and you run into a lot of people like that. Like a lot of talented guys that get comfortable where they at you know what mm-hmm. i mean he was super comfortable i was like bro you belong somewhere else mm-hmm. you know what i mean so i did that uh i'm gonna let you talk if you want to ask some more questions i mean no I, yeah so uh, oh well so so you came back here after mexico right mm-hmm. and 
if correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but you uh you know, you were able to get, you know, um a contract sons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talk about that. How did you signing a contract with the Phoenix Suns happen? That's a good that's a, that's a, that's I mean, I mean it's it's a good story to tell. Like um so <laughs> So one of my guys, uh, his name is Billy. He's he watched me grow up and playing basketball or whatever. So he used to work down at the, the America West Arena. I also knew Mark West. Mm-hmm. I went to his camp. And we all look, Billy coached me at the Mark West camps. Mark West was uh, the executive at the the Phoenix Suns at the time. Yeah, and also for y'all that don't know, Mark West is a a legendary NBA uh, Suns player. Yeah, center. He so he played center, center for, the, for Suns. the Suns for like yep. 10, 15 years or yep. whatever. And I, mm-hmm. I went to all his camps growing up while he was playing with the Suns and after he retired. So uh, yeah, yeah. So Billy put some some words in Mark West's ear and told him about me. Sent him some video and he was like, "Yeah, they invited me to uh, the informal workouts." Mm-hmm. So we go to informal workouts and I'm in there just cooking you know what i mean my team winning every time so they started picking it up and then and for my workouts they bring it's like invite players you know what i mean so they bring players from like they're interested in and bringing over mm-hmm. and everybody they're bringing over i'm out playing yeah and these are the guys they've been looking at for a while i'm flying under the radar you know what yeah. i mean so uh get there started playing then the nba guys that had contracts started coming in they thought it was going to be like a drop off like oh now he can't win because the, the main guys and they got there, I kept winning, and they was like, oh, we like him. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? He, like, run the team. But I think where I went wrong was, and I was, I was trying to be too much like Steve Nash. You know, Steve Nash was a passer, and, mm-hmm. like, that ain't what got me there. Like, I, was, I had the scoring ability, and, like, I brought something different than what he was doing. And I kind of, like, if that's one thing I could have changed from that situation, I probably would have. I would have been more aggressive, like, trying to mm-hmm. take over the game more, like, instead of just – facilitating like it was cool you know what i mean it got mm-hmm. me to the to on a team doing that style but like i think if i'd have went my route i think i'd have could have stayed on the roster longer you know what i mean so mm-hmm. but yeah it was, it was a good opportunity man i got with the sons uh they invited me to camp we went to camp we ended up going to uh italy uh for like the nba europe tour mm-hmm. you know what i mean so mm-hmm. me and that, me and stoudemire at the time he stoudemire was on the team me and him got super close amari stoudemire amari stoudemire yeah. yeah shout out to amari man my boy mm-hmm. uh me and amari stoudemire got real close you know what i mean so we was kind of like inseparable you know what i mean we went overseas talked you know what i'm saying he's very like religious so he was always talking about god and and you know what i'm saying preaching to me and telling me to stay focused like no matter what happened keep pushing you know what I mean and it was a good experience man like I had a lot of veterans on my team Roger Bell actually James Jones uh the owner of the uh of general the manager of the sun yeah general yeah. manager of the sun he was on the team I always knew he was gonna do something bright man because he was one of them kids that like didn't spend his money always like came to practice worked hard went home did his job you know what mm-hmm. I'm family man like and he, Sean Marks, same thing. Sean Marks, Sean Marks. Yep. Shout out to Sean Marks. Uh, Running the Nets. Yep. All them. So it's, it's funny, like, everybody from that Suns organization doing something big in the league Something now, big, I mean? yep. Like, Steve Nash, that got the coaching job. Mm-hmm. Sean Marks. Uh, Sean Marks. Uh, James Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Barbosa. Shout out to Barbosa. Barbosa, yep. Yeah, Roger Bell. Roger Bell. I love Roger, Roger Bell. Roger Bell, man. Yeah. He's a dog. He's a warrior. Yeah love Roger Bell but yeah man I had, I was surrounded by a lot of veterans and I was the only rookie on the team I was pretty much the last cut on the team obviously everybody else had guaranteed contracts yeah. we had I think that year they signed Marcus Banks Marcus then, Banks yep, yep. Then remember they had him. Boris what, what killed me I think I think that was a year they signed Boris Diaw to, to that big contract mm-hmm. and like as long as he held out I was good you know mm-hmm. what I mean as soon as you signed that contract, it was like, ah, mm-hmm. we got to let somebody go. And since you're the only one that ain't on the guaranteed contract, we're going to send you to our G League team. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Went there. Man, I, I played good. I was actually, like, almost fortunate to get a call back up from the Suns, but they had to make some changes and just didn't fall in. You know what I'm saying? The mm-hmm. pieces didn't fall in line like they're supposed to do. So. Yeah. But, you know but, I mean? but, I mean, still, that – that experience must have been, you know, just life changing. Yeah. And an incredible sure. experience getting to do all that. Yeah, for sure. Like it was 
it's just to be part of a NBA organization, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Just to wear that Suns uniform. I still got the jersey. Yeah. Number 16. They just threw me that number, though. They ain't even yeah. <laughs> but I was happy, man, like, having my family come to the games. I'm from Phoenix, you know what Hell I mean? Yeah. They come to the preseason games, get them all tickets. Like, it was a good time. I, like I said, I wish it would have lasted longer. But yeah. I enjoyed the time I did play with them, uh, and I, I appreciate the Suns for the opportunity, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, and, uh, yeah, man, it was, it was a great experience. Like, and I, I, I always had a good relationship with the organization. I used to always go up there every summer and play and – always get invited like it mm-hmm. wasn't ever no bla- bad blood yeah. you know what I mean so mm-hmm. yeah it was definitely like what was it like playing against or uh playing against in practice I would say um and and being around Steve Nash during that time that's probably most of, one of the most high he had one of the most the highest IQs I ever seen in basketball like passing wise and like I actually had a picture. I wish you'd have pulled it up. It was me and him guard. Like I was. I've seen it. You seen that one? Yeah. So, yeah, so I was guarding it. him, and I was telling everybody, I was like, yo, like one on one, I can guard him. In that pick and roll situation, I didn't stand a chance. He was probably one of the best pick and roll guards, mm-hmm. probably ever to play in the league. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you can guard him like one on one, but like once he get in that pick and roll, like and you ain't got no help, you dead. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like. Yeah, and it was just a good like just playing with him like he was coming off two time MVP, two time league MVP, two time league MVP like just learning from him and like his worth ethic like people don't understand like how much work like you got to put in to be in the league you know what I mean like these guys like and people don't understand like these people work you know what I'm saying we see him on TV but behind closed doors this dude got a personal trainer like he eating right personal trainer like. Somebody working on his balance and all—it's all—it's a lot of things that go in being a pro. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. a lot of kids don't see that. They just mm-hmm. see, and it, it was—I kind of blame myself for that because growing up, what you watch highlights, right? Mm-hmm. So you thought all these NBA players were so perfect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I—I I used to get mad at myself because I missed a shot. I'm like, yo, Steve Nash will never miss a shot on TV. But I'm watching highlights. You know what I mean? I don't know no better. I'm like, yo, I never—I don't think I can get to the league. I can't—I'm not making no shots. Mm-hmm. But. You got to realize they're human too, man. Like, exactly. they get shots, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you just got to work hard and put in the extra work. And it's a lot, it was a lot of talented kids, like, out here in Phoenix that just didn't put in that work, man. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was, it was, it was, I, I, I ain't going to sit up here and say I was the best player to come out of Arizona, but it was some players that was, I was better than me, but didn't have that focus and locked in. Mm-hmm. Like, they was more talented than me. Like, I just had that drive, man. Like, I, I just always wanted to be better and to be the best player on the court. And mm-hmm. I think so many distractions out there. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and, like, just for the kids out there, like, it's going to be distractions. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you just got to stay focused. Y'all heard that, man. It's always going to be distractions. Family mm-hmm. distractions, like, girls, like, everything. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to you gotta sacrifice. And a lot of these people in the league and NBA players, they sacrifice a lot. You sacrifice a lot of time with your, with your family and your mm-hmm. kids and your friends and your relatives and, you know what I'm saying? You gotta. It's it's a lot of hard work to go behind them closed doors. No facts. Yeah. So. No, most definitely, man. Now, that's what I learned from Steve Nash, man. Putting in the extra work. Like he used to come in every day and practice and jump rope before practice even start for like thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Just jump rope. Mm-hmm. After he finished that, he go out there and get his trainer to go out there and shoot. This will practice start. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then he practice after practice. Same thing. Same thing. Jump rope, shoot, go eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a routine. Like, and, and if you can't stay disciplined, man, it ain't the place for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Steve Nash was – was was Steve Nash 6'3", or was he 6'1"? He was 6'3". 6'3". It's, it's, it's funny, though, because I'm I'm 6'1". You're 6'1", yeah. I'm 6'1", and, like, if you stand next to him, like, you wouldn't even realize it. But, yeah, he's, he's a solid 6'3". Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, everybody thinks he's so small on TV. Yeah. 6'3 is not – to a normal person, 6'3 is tall. Yeah, for sure. And I like to tell everybody, I'm 6'1". Yeah. You feel me? We're very short in the NBA. And the, and the basketball community, <laughs> We're period. very short. Very short, man. I'm, I've been the shortest person on my team probably 90% of the time. It's probably yeah. one player I'll be taller than. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. For sure, man. Well, hey, man, y'all heard it, man. You know, son to the Suns, you feel me? Got to play with the Suns, you know what I mean? And got to learn from Steve Nash. You know, that's a... That's something that not a lot of people get to do, you know what I mean? So, you know, that's that's incredible, man. Kudos for that, for sure. Not a lot of people from the city can say they did that. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> all right. So, 
you know, you mentioned going to the G League, you know, uh, <clears throat> and you went to Anaheim first. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, obviously it's it's Grand Rapids now, um, but you, you you were at Anaheim, and then you were in, um, <clears throat> I think you were at uh, in Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. How, how was that experience playing in the G League? G League experience is, is, I mean, now it's probably a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? These was the early years of the G League, so, like, like I said, it was a grind. We didn't, like, now they probably provide them with cars and stuff. We didn't have a car. Mm -hmm. Like, we went to Anaheim. Anaheim was uh, the Suns affiliate mm -hmm. at the time. So, the Suns sent me to Anaheim because uh, Reggie Gary was him and Steve. Actually, Steve Kerr was with the Suns at the time. He was. was yeah, he yeah, was. Yeah, in front so, office, was he? Front office, mm -hmm. yep. So, Steve Kerr sent me, he, all them sent me over to uh, Reggie Gary, which was, he went to U of A. And they wanted him. They was like, they told him, it's, fun, it's funny, they told him, it was like, if you can't get this guard back to the NBA, you don't, you don't, you don't need to be coaching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so They wanted you back. Yeah, they NBA. wanted me back, man. Like, I, I, I can't. A lot goes into it, though. It's a lot, yeah. It's mm -hmm. a lot of politics. It's a lot of, it's a mm -hmm. lot of. A lot of things that didn't fall in line for me, and uh, I'm, I was blessed for the opportunity. But like I said, like I, I don't have no regrets on my career. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I had a fantastic career. But yeah, so I went to Anaheim, uh, beautiful city. I love Anaheim, right next to Disneyland. Our our arena was actually uh, the convention center, mm -hmm. so we was right really really close to Disneyland. So that was a good experience. I, we had a couple players uh, that actually went to the NBA. Uh, from that team, Jawad Williams, I was yep. my roommate. Uh, Jawad Williams, yeah. Went to uh, went to play with Cleveland, uh, played with LeBron, had some experience there. Mm, uh, yes, sir. My boy Andre Owens, he and I actually ran into him overseas. Wow. Yeah, so Andre Owens, uh, I had a lot of players on that team. Marlon Clark, like it was a lot of Mo Charlo, like it was it was, it was a lot of players out there that y'all probably wouldn't know these names, but if you looked them up, like these dudes did big things in the basketball mm -hmm. community. You know what I mean? But yeah, I went to Anaheim uh, two years. Uh, like I said, I, I was coached under uh, Reggie Gary. Uh, good experience, good coach. Uh, then I went to Colorado, and I think I think Colorado was probably the best situation for me, but I had lost my patience already. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was ready for something different. Like, I was, mm -hmm. all these sons kept promising me, like, yeah, we're going to bring you back, and yada, 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 and. It just didn't like. Then I they sent me to Colorado, and I feel bad because um, they had a gro great coach there, uh, Coach Wolf, I, I don't, Joe Wolf. So he was a uh, he was probably one of the best coaches in in the G League at the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And very flexible, very player coach, and he gave me the opportunity to go home. He was like, "Hey, anytime I know you've been going through a lot, if you want to go home and see your family, he was very flexible." You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. At the time, you couldn't give me flexibility. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, I can go home. <laughs> oh, I hopped on the first thing smoking, man. <laughs> so I ended up going home. And uh, so I left Colorado. I ended up going home. I went back to Mexico. Mm -hmm. But this time around in Mexico, Mexico had a little bit more money. Yeah. And the G League was only paying like 2000 a month. After taxes, you probably see maybe 1600 So I'm like, yeah. I ain't making no money out here. Wasting Hell my time. Man. So. I got a call from Mexico. I was like, hey, how much would it take for you to get here? I'm like, what y'all got? Mm -hmm. Give me what y'all got. And we and we had lost. I think before I left, we only lost one game. I mean, then we lost in the finals, but that's a, we got cheated in that. We didn't even get to finish the finals. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they ended up paying me like 7000 a month. Okay. Yeah, so I went from 1600 to 7000 So I'm over there playing already, and Joe think I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, he's like, hey, you uh, let me know when you're ready to come back. If you need more time to be with, I'm already, I'm already, I'm about. You already there? I'm already there playing. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, some family things came up, and I got an opportunity playing Mexico, and like, my family need help with money, and I think this is better financially. He was like, all right, cool, man. Like, I appreciate it, and he loved me. Like, he wanted me on his team, loved me like that. The next year, he gets a coaching job in the NBA. Wow. Crazy. Just, just my luck. He gets to the coach job in the NBA, and I'm like, only you can mess up something like this. Like, only mm -hmm. you can do it. But Hey, man. Sometimes, you know, that's just how it goes. Yeah. You know it was, what I mean? It was just, I just feel like I was just making 
mistakes. I mean, as much as like like I said, like I don't regret my career, but like it was, it was certain things I could have changed or did different. I probably would have. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, and it, it could have led me a different path. I could have been in the NBA, and I could. Everybody said, "Oh, okay, you could play in the NBA." Like I really believe I could have made an NBA if I made the right choices mm-hmm. and certain when things got tight. You know what I mean? Yeah. No facts, bro. And you know, and regardless though, is like. You have a very like storied, you know, career. Like, regardless of if it's in the NBA or not, you feel me? Like, you know, playing in these league, playing in the top league in Mexico, you know what I mean? Making it to the big games out there, mm-hmm. like that's that's something that not a lot of people can say they've done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even hoopers, you know, even real good hoopers, like, you know, I've known a lot of hoopers that were supposed to go overseas too, and couldn't even do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And especially even not just playing out there, but taking the like, really balling out there. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. We we uh we actually won a championship in Mexico. I think it was 2009. Mm-hmm. Won a championship. Uh, that was that was crazy, man. We won a championship. We we dominated, man. Me and my boy, uh, Brandon Brown. Uh, not the Brandon Brown from here. Another guy from New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah, we end up he end up coming down. We end up winning a championship, man. We had fun, so much fun in Mexico. Then like, and that's where like it lead up to me. And I'm kind of skipping over like the Serbia thing, but yeah, yeah, you you played in Serbia. Yeah, so you played in Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Yeah. Israel. Israel. Germany. Germany. Yeah. Uh, and in Spain, Spain was my last stop. Spain. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna touch on each country and, and my experience and. And then if you got any questions after that, like mm-hmm. any stories you want to hear about it, I'm going to let you know. So I'm just going to break it down. So my first year, so after the G League, I went to Mexico, won a championship that year. That year they paid me. I won a championship that year. Then I went to another league. So it's two leagues in Mexico. You got the Cibo Copa and you got the LMVP. The Cibo Copa mm-hmm. is kind of like the the league to transi- transition into the LMVP. Mm-hmm. So we won a championship there. I went from making like 7000 a month there. And then I went to LMVP, and they was paying me like fifteen. Mm-hmm. So and it was one of the top teams in the LMVP, and I didn't have an agent at the time. My boy Brandon Brown had an agent, Rob Wilson. Love you, man. Always gonna have respect for you, man. Been my agent since Mexico. Ten years, he was my agent for for my whole career after I got him. Mm-hmm. So he saw me playing out there in Mexico. And he's like, "Hey, uh, what are you doing here?" <laughs> I'm like, "Well, I ain't got no agent." Like. I didn't trust nobody, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I had a little shaky situation with a couple agents before, so I was com- comfortable in, in, in Mexico or whatever. They knew me out there. I was a legend in Mexico, and it was just convenient for me to be – I didn't need no agent, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So when I met him, after I won a championship, I signed with him, uh, went to Jalapa, played in Jalapa, beautiful city. I love it out there. Uh, went to Jalapa, and then he was like, hey – if I can get your opportunity to go overseas, would you go overseas again? And I was like, I don't know, man. Because mm-hmm. my experience in, in overseas was the worst. That's when I went to Serbia. So mm-hmm. I'm going to backtrack to that. And uh, I went to Serbia, and it was probably the worst experience of my life. Why Why the worst? Why worst? Because like I was basically practicing and not playing. Mm-hmm. And nobody in my team spoke English. The coach didn't speak no English. Like, it was like. It was playing. It was like playing basketball mute. Like yeah. I didn't understand him. He didn't understand me. We yelling at each other. Like he getting mad. I'm like, yo, what is he talking about? Yeah. Like, like no trend. Like it was. It was. Yeah. It was, I can it, imagine. Yeah, and he was like, he was taking me out. He yell at me and just take me out. I'm like, why he take me out? Like you like, don't yeah. even know what he's saying. I ain't know. What like, and and Serbian coaches, man, they different. Like if yeah. anybody played overseas, y'all know what I'm talking about. These these damn Serbian coaches is crazy. <laughs> man, they like he like kicking up a storm on like getting mad, like stomping his feet every time I'm getting the ball. He's, I'm like, yo, what's wrong? I can't play basketball like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, I just had, like, the worst experience. Like, I stayed at, like, man, I stayed in a chocolate factory. The chocolate factory? A chocolate For factory. Real? They had, like, rooms in a chocolate like, Damn. It was, like, basically, you like, so just imagine a big-ass chocolate factory. And Damn. You walk inside, they got security because they got chocolate, and you can smell the chocolate. Smell good as fuck. <laughs> so you can smell the chocolate and shit. So you got to go up in the room, and then they got like little just beds inside, like a little room. Yeah. And that was where we stayed at. 
We had no car, nothing. Bro, I was standing in the, I was standing in a chocolate factory. That and back Damn. then, now they got like international plans. Back mm -hmm. then, I'm spending like thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred on my phone bill because of roaming charges. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, and then I had a girlfriend at the time. She wanted to talk all the time because she mm -hmm. worried about what I'm doing out there. I'm yeah. like, I ain't doing, I ain't doing nothing. I can't do shit out here. Yeah, <laughs> I could barely call you. So I used to have to go to like the internet cafe and email her. It was just, it was just like one of the worst. Like I said, one of the worst experiences of my life. Like basketball mm -hmm. and like communicating and being away from my family for the first time. Like, so when he threw the Germany thing out there, I was like. I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. Like, my experience in Serbia was terrible. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, I don't think I want to go back overseas. Like, I, I didn't have no plans of going back overseas. But I, he sent me back over there, man, like, after the, the Mexico season was over with Jalapa. The season was over, like, like I want to say, like, January, February, March, April. Maybe, maybe April. And then Germany finished in, like, June, so he wanted me to go out there for two months. He's mm -hmm. like, yo, they looking for a guard for two months. Uh, they might fall out the league. They want you to save them and stay in the league. So I go there. Mind you, this team been in the league for like five or ten years, and they on the they on the bridge of like going down. So in overseas, if you're the bottom two teams, they drop you down the league. Wow. And if you win, so if you drop down the league and you win that league, you can move up to the top league. Mm-hmm. So we playing in, uh, it's called the BBL, which is the top league in Germany, on the bottom team, and it was a good team. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They played good style of basketball for me, like run and gun, have fun or whatever. And I, I got there, and I was just like, at first I was like trying to like fill out the team and like, you know what I mean, trying to fit in. And like the first two games, I played bad, man. Like I, they might have wanted to send me home. That's how bad I played. But I mm -hmm. want to say I wasn't playing bad. I just wasn't aggressive. Yeah. So the coach pulled me to the side. He was like, hey, listen, like, uh, we didn't bring you here for this. Mm -hmm. We need you to score and do what you was doing in Mexico. We yeah. need you to do here. Like, mm -hmm. And I was like, you sure? He was like, yeah, man. He was like, all right, I don't want these players saying nothing when I start shooting this motherfucking ball. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Because that's the last thing I want. I want to come to the team and just start shooting the ball. He's like, no, that's what we brought you here for. Like, we lack in scoring. Like, we yeah. don't need you to come here. And try to get everybody involved. We want you to come out here and lead the team. Man, after they told me that, boy, I went to well, shooting went the ball to every time, cooking. <laughs> he wasn't like, and I was taking like some bad shots. And I look at the bench, I'm thinking I'm about to come out. He was like, keep playing, keep playing. I'm like, oh shit, for real? Yeah, yeah. Man, listen, I got the green light for everything. So after that, it was just, I was on go mode. Mm -hmm. So the last two months, I ended, up, I ended up leading the league in scoring. Yeah. So they was like, hey, we want to bring you back. Mm hmm. I'm like, say less. So they end up signing me for like, I think it was like 120,000. So I was just, my first time making six figures overseas. Mm -hmm. I'm like, shit, hell yeah, I come back. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's lit. Back. Yeah, so. That's hard. And Germany, Germany, like, and this is like, I'm single now too. Yeah. I'm in Germany. Yeah, some bad ones out oh there. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> I had to like, to respect all the relationships I had, man, Germany was. It was different, man. It was, wow. and it was like Americanized too. Like, it was different. It was some, whew. yeah. It was, it was lit out there. We had a, mm -hmm. uh, and Dortmund. You heard of Dur Dortmund before? Dortmund, yeah. So they got one of the biggest soccer teams in Europe. I got so. a Dortmund jersey. Yeah, okay, so mm -hmm. yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. So yeah. like we, I played in Hagen, which was like 15 minutes from Dortmund. Mm -hmm. So we used to just drive over there and just turn up. You know turn what I mean? Up, like, yeah. And it was probably like, and they love like like European girls love Americans. You know Hell what I mean? Yeah. Like they always had a dream of American taking taking them. Taking mm -hmm. them <laughs> I ain't taking no yeah. girl back. To tell you the truth. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> no, nah, uh, man, I had a great time out there, basketball wise, living wise, like teammates. You know what I mean? The the, mm -hmm. the whole thing. And that year, mind you, they was in the league, they was in the league for like ten years, and they never made the playoffs. That year, we made the playoffs, and mm -hmm. it was just. It was lit, bro. Like, it was, yo, I'm about to get paid. Yeah. We went to the playoffs. they never been to the playoffs. I mm -hmm. led the score. I led the team. I was guarded the year that year. I led the league in scoring. I'm about to get paid. Like, mm -hmm. I can go back to the league after this. Like, and my agent was like, yeah, man, I got some offers for you. Like, 500000 I'm like, a half a mil? Mm -hmm. I'm like, hell yeah. That's litty. Yeah, so I'm out there like, 
I'm getting ready in the summer. I'm training my ass off because I'm about to, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to make some bread. So the team come back and they was like, hey, we want you back. But they only had like 180. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, my agent just told me 500. Mm-hmm. I don't think 180 and five. That's mm-hmm. a big gap. As much as I love y'all, yeah, that's a big gap. But I was, like I said, I'm loyal though. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was entertaining. And I was like, okay, if y'all give me 180 for two years, so 180, 100, 360, like, I do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And the sponsor, so I had a, so the, my salary year, the first year, they had a sponsor to come in and he paid my whole salary. Mm-hmm. So what he did this year, he was like, okay, what do Dobbin want? Oh, Dobbin won 180. Okay. Here's Dobbin's salary, 180. <clears throat> y'all take it. Y'all make sure you come back. They came back with all for 160. I'm like, no, nah, I'll come back for 180. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing 160. It's like, I didn't know that the, the I didn't know the, the story that he had already gave him the money. This, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? This is what I picked up afterwards. So they was trying to take twenty off the top of what he sent them and pay another player. Damn. So they signed <coughs> Shiesty. So they signed the other player, and they was trying to give me the one sixty. I'm like, I'm not coming. I told y'all one eighty. That's the price. Like, like one eighty <laughs> to five hundred. That's a big gap. Like, I'm mm-hmm. actually taking a lot. You know what I'm saying? But I'm thinking two years, three sixty. Cool, mm-hmm. like I ain't tripping. Like, they, was, they was trying to offer me like five hundred, two years or something. So it was like two fifty. So it was a gap, but it wasn't. It was enough to, you know, what I'm saying my loyalty was worth losing that much money. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And we just won. So if we'd have won a championship, I was thinking like, shit, I might get a lead call up. Yeah, you fact. know what I mean. So and and I was already in the perfect situation. So I didn't come back. The sponsor got pissed, mm-hmm. and it was like, why Dobbin ain't here? He wanted one eighty, and. I gave y'all 180. Where's he at? And then he found out what happened, and he ended up. That was a main sponsor. He ended up backing out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They signed some players for like two years, so they had they had salary cap on a on a on a books already that he was supposed to take care of. But he was like, "No, nah, mm-hmm. I gave you 180 for diving. Diving's not here. This is my last year doing it." Mm-hmm. But they had already signed some people for two years, so they had to come up with another sponsor, and nobody was stepping in because they found out what happened. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that team ended up folding in like the middle of the year. Mm-hmm. So they had to they had to drop down or whatever. And like, I ain't gonna yeah, lie, I love that. Folded. That's my yeah. That's my that's my team, man. I love Phoenix Phoenix Hagen like that, and it was called Phoenix, Phoenix which Hagen, is crazy. Yeah. Phoenix Hagen like that was probably the best. That, that was probably the best crowd I ever played in front of. Like besides Mexico, Mexico was tough, but. As far as like, man, it it was it was lit out there, man. Like mm-hmm. I had fun in Germany, like. Dope, but, dope. Yeah, but to go back to the money thing, like <clears throat> I was turning out all kind of jobs because I thought I had five hundred thousand coming in. So, long story short, that's how I ended up in Bulgaria. Mm-hmm. Everything, all these teams was like, yeah, we're gonna take somebody younger for half of what. I'm like, you ain't gotta take them half. You can give me a little bit less. I take half. You know what I mean? Half. I take yeah. two fifty. Like uh-huh. I ain't worried about that. So they end up like a lot of teams was like, yeah, we didn't like the style of the the way they played in Germany and they played too fast and we more of a slow down pace and they had all these excuses, man. So I ended up going to Bur- uh, Bulgaria. They had like a Euro Cup team, so they got you got Euro Cup and Euro League. Euro League is the top league and Euro Cup is the league underneath. So underneath, okay. So you go to a Euro Cup league, you gonna get more exposure and stuff like that. So I went to a Euro Cup team. And we end up getting smacked like the first round, like. Mm-hmm. So I was like, and Bulgaria is like terrible, bro. Like it was like sixteen hundred population. It was more really? sheep. It was more sheep than people in the. In the wow. In, yeah, it was bad, man. It was like out on middle middle of nowhere, and it was just terrible. I was basically there for basketball. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they gyms, like so we played at an arena for like the Europe Cup games, mm-hmm. but they gym like they gym was like this and like. This was like a wall right here. That was mm-hmm. a gym, and then they wow. had they had bleachers on this side. Damn. And it was I went from playing in arenas, to hold like ten that, to fucking like bullshit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, I can't play out here like that. Euro Cup over. We ain't playing the arena yeah. no more. Like, okay. give me a body here. So <laughs> I end up leaving. I turned. I, I left a lot of money on the table, and I end up going yeah. to uh, Israel. Israel. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about Israel. You went there when Amari Stoudemire was playing there, right? Not the year. So the year I went there, Amari wasn't there yet. Mm-hmm. So the year Amari played was like when I went to Spain. 
Oh, okay. And we ended up playing against him. When we played, he played against him. Okay. We played against him when he was playing for Jerusalem. And that year we played him, we ended up winning the championship for the cha- uh, Basketball Champions League. So we had to beat them to to move up or whatever. So we ended up running to Amari. Amari's super cool, man. That's probably one of the most exciting players I ever watched play for the Suns when he was – before he got hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know how dominant he stat. was. Like, stat. Standing yeah, tall stat. and talented. Yeah. Stat. Shout out to Stat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was probably one of, like, my favorite players to watch on Phoenix. Still to this day, like, he's still one oh, of my yeah. favorite players to for ever sure. play for Phoenix. So, like I said, like, we had lost contact after the Suns, you know what I mean? So, just to see him in Israel, like, and you know what I'm saying? And he, he got the Israel and roots. So, just seeing him out there, man, and, and seeing him do something he loved in, in his country, you know what I mean? Like, it was beautiful, and just to match up with him, whatever. I was, we was out there talking stuff and mess. It, it, we had a good time, mm-hmm. man. Like, I'm glad we beat him, though. But yeah, did you ever like after the game? Did y'all ever like link up at all or really talk about anything? I or? mean, we talked before the game or whatever. Okay. Like, it was such a big gap between like the Phoenix Suns saying like he had a lot of things going on in his life, and I had things going on in my life. So it was like we kind of like. Yeah, the, the coolness was still there. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? We was teammates, you know what I mean? I mm-hmm. always got love for all my teammates I played with, but, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So we ain't get to chill like that, but I would have loved to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I would have loved to sit down and, and chop it up with him again, you know what I mean? Facts. Like, But anytime I see him, it's love, you know what I Hell mean? Hell yeah. Like, it's love for everybody, all my teammates. But mm-hmm. Hell yeah. So um, I want to ask you, through all the countries, man, Mexico, Bulgaria, Spain, Israel, what would you say was like your favorite country to to live in culturally? You know, you bring up a lot of bad experiences in some of these countries. Mm-hmm. Which which country was you know excluding America? Like, what was your favorite? Like the best living situation for you? The best living situation. Uh, I'm gonna rank. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do a rank. I'm gonna do a ranking. So I'm gonna rank worst to best. So. Worst, obvious, Serbia. Serbia. Next would be... Bulgaria. Bulgaria. <laughs> this is tough. Canada. Canada was... I, I didn't stay there long enough, so I, okay, can, I, can, yeah. I couldn't like count Like two Canada. months, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't there long enough. Okay. Uh, it's it's got to be between Spain, Germany, and Israel, man. Like, I just... I had some... T- it's just different pieces that them countries brought. Like, Spain was, to me, because I'm like, I just said, I'm a lover. I'm a family guy. Mm-hmm. Like, I lo- I like, I'm a lover. So, Spain is probably the most loving country I've, I've ever been in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, just people real friendly. Like, it wasn't like no gun violence. It wasn't none of that. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't none of that. You ain't had to watch your back. And like, but mm-hmm. that's Europe in general, like. In the country I play Israel, well, Israel, mm-hmm. you had to worry about bombings and stuff. Bombings like, and yeah. shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit like that, but, yeah, it's tough, man, because, like, on a family aspect of things, I would say Spain. But as far as, mm-hmm. like, having fun all the way front, all around fun, it would be Germany and just, like, on a, a religious type thing, it would be Israel. You yeah. know, all of them brought different mm-hmm. aspects, but, like, it's hard for me to pick, like, one over the other, man. Mexico even up there. Like, I love Mexico. Like, everything. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody always talk about. Treated you great out there. Yeah, I didn't. I never had a problem with nobody. Like, you stayed in the lane. Like, everybody treated me with respect. Mm-hmm. I treated them with respect. And I think that's what it is. Like, a lot of people be scared about Mexico. But if you don't mess with their girls and you focus on basketball, like, they leave you alone. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's, it's when you go looking for trouble. Yeah. That's when they mess with you, like. I'm saying you're talking crazy to the fans and not knowing who they connected to, like. Oh wow. yeah, yeah, because yeah, know, they got yeah, some like, shit going on out there. Exactly, it's too much going on, like, and some people don't know how to do that. But mm-hmm. yeah, I had some, I had some great times, man. Israel was beautiful, man. Probably, probably most one of the most beautiful countries I've been to. Like, I actually went to Jerusalem, did the Dead Sea. You know what I mean? Put wow. The, put the mud on me and stuff like that, and went wow. to the, went to the wall. It, uh, man, it, it walked down a. Uh, where Jesus walked and had the cross on him, did that. Like, wow. Yeah, so Jerusalem, Israel is more, like I said, like on a religious thing. Like, that was probably the most beautiful country as far as that. Germany is more like my fun time, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I have fun in Germany, party, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful country. We went to Berlin, Berlin Wall, all that good stuff. Spain was, like I said, oh, that's when I was, like, in my family mode. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I was out there just real chilled and – 
I had fun there. I had fun there too. But like all the, those three countries, I actually those four countries, like probably, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like I would rotate those in first place, any 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 order. You know what I mean. Like first, second, third. And I could throw it again. It'd be first, second, third somewhere else. You know. What I mean? Got you. But, That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. So yeah, man. Just gonna chop it up about a couple more things. Then you know what I mean. So uh, we we were talking off camera about uh, TBT. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? The basketball tournament. Uh, for those of y'all that don't know, that's, uh, you know, uh, a, a tournament that's aired on ESPN. You know, lots of uh, big-time players have played, you know, in that league. Um, I want to I wanna circle back to 2015 mm-hmm. when you made it to the uh, million-dollar game. <sighs> Team 23. Team 23. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, how was that, playing that? Man, it was – first of all, TVT, man, it, y'all so professional, man. I love what y'all do out there. Like, the first – I think it was, like, first or second year y'all had hosted the TVT, the, the Million Dollar Tournament, man. It was it was A1, like, from the staff members to the owners. Like, everything was, like, legit, man. And, like, like you said, there was some great players out there. Like, I ran mm-hmm. into a lot of great teams. But, like, playing in the championship, man, it was, it was fierce, man. You just got to imagine, like, two teams – not only competing, but, like, you competing for bread. You yeah. know what I mean? This is, like, life changes for a lot of people that's mm-hmm. on the court. You know what I mean? It was like a dog fight out there. Man, I came out there with, like, scratches, like, shirt ripped. Like, I was in a dog fight. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and they just, they just, I mean, we played good. We blew, we were blowing teams out the whole tournament. And they, they was probably, like, they had some. They had some good players on their team, man, and they just. They just. They was a lot more hunger than us. I think we felt like we was. We was a better team for sure, mm-hmm. but they just had more fight. You know what I mean? Like, and it came down. Like I said, it came down to like, we lost by like two, and I, I wish I can go back and get that ball. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I felt like if I had that ball in my hand, we'd have won the game. Two but points, man. Two Shit. points. I was shooting a three for sure. I know. I'm not going to the hole. I'm shooting a tray ball. We win or go home. Like, but I didn't even get the chance to shoot it, man. I was feeling good that game, man. But it was a great experience, man. Like I said, a lot of people see overseas. Like you don't get to see, you know what I'm saying? Like yo, like like a lot of my family don't get to see me play overseas because mm-hmm. some of the games ain't aired. Mm-hmm. This was on ESPN. You know what I mean? So I had people like hitting me up and like. Hey man, good luck. You know what I'm saying? People I ain't seen and heard from in years. years like, and yeah. they ain't seen me play since high school. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the TBT gives a lot of exposure to people that play overseas to get a chance for their family to see them play on you know yeah. what I'm saying on ESPN mm-hmm. or something like that. So man, it was it was probably the most it, it was it was a good experience, man. And we had a chance to to go back again and we just fell short a couple of times, a couple of injuries and stuff like that. So this year probably be my last year doing it you know what mm-hmm. i mean and it's it's called team Heartfire, but it's like a lot of a t- lot of players from the team 23 team like they kind of converted over to not i probably i think it's one player me and another player that played on the original team that's gonna play for this team so mm-hmm. that's pretty dope uh first game is july 19th in wichita on espn i don't know if it's on espn one two three plus i don't know it's on espn mm-hmm. i think it's on espn one, I think. Mm-hmm. Don't mark me on that, but it's July nineteenth. Uh, anybody want to watch? I can see old man get some buckets, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tap in, man. Check it out, ESPN, man. You, you can catch Davin up there. You know what I mean, yes, sir. Hooping, man. TBT, man. Check it out. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good time up there for sure. I've watched some games for yeah, sure. It's, it's competitive, man. You feel me for sure. Um, <clears throat> so. I want to touch on your most recent stint in Mexico mm-hmm. for Venados de Mazatlan. Right. Mazatlan, man. Mazatlan. Yeah. Ma- Mazatlan? Mazatlan. Mazatlan. Yeah. It's not Ma- Ma- Mazatlan? Nah. Okay. I might. I mean, it could be. I mean, however you want to pronounce okay. that. Okay. I call it Mazatlan. Mazatlan. Yeah. <laughs> Mazatlan. Sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. So you played there last year. Played there last year. It was probably the only city, only city I probably would have played for. In Mexico, mm-hmm. I told myself I like. I always wanted when I first played in uh, Cananea, we actually drove to Mazatlan, which was a 24-hour bus ride. Wow! So we drove 24 hours on the bus there, played two games, turned around, drove 24 hours. But I was like, man, I love this place. Like, 
and me and the owner got cool, you know what I mean? Uh, shout out to Paul. That's my guy. He the owner of mm -hmm. uh, the owner of uh, the Mazalan or whatever. And he re out, he reached out to me. He's like, hey man, you know you gotta play a season with me before you, you know what I'm saying, before you shut it down. I was like, yeah, I told you I'll play, man. So okay. I always told myself like I want to start where I finish that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And as much as I wanted to play for Conanea, they didn't have a team in the league that year. So Mazalan was definitely higher priority. Like, mm. and that's a beautiful city. Like. Crazy city too, man. Like they, it's like, it's like Vegas, man. For real? I swear, like they party <laughs> every day of the week. Tequila everywhere. Everywhere, and I stayed like right on the main strip. So it was like, they got this carnival, man. They got the bikers, like wow. It's always like a event out there, man. It's a beautiful. Like I would, I would live out there. Like I, I, I would, I would definitely live out there. Like that's how much, that's how beautiful it is out there. Mm -hmm. Like it's. It's probably not one of the most clean cities in Mexico as mm -hmm. far as, like, Cabo or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But Mazalan is beautiful, man. The people out there are nice. You know what I mean? Like, organization was nice. I had a nice apartment. And that's the good thing about playing overseas. Like, they give you a car, an mm -hmm. apartment, man. You ain't got to pay no rent for eight or nine months. You're like, good. Shh, <laughs> you yeah. can stack up bread, all that. Yeah, but, yeah, Mazalan was my last stint out there in Mexico or whatever. I had a chance – uh, this year to go play in Kulikan, but I kind of turned it down. Uh, mm -hmm. And Kulikan, another beautiful city, like a lot of a lot of mafia and cartel out there though. That's yeah, that's for real. That's a dangerous place. So I was like, ah. as much as I like it, like I it it. What were some things you saw out there? Whoo, <laughs> man! I seen some crazy things, man. So yeah. I think the craziest thing I saw. I'm, I'm gonna give y'all two stories. So. My first couple of years in Kananea, uh, they was having like cartel wars or whatever. Like, and one of the uh, one of the fathers got like locked up in jail or they kidnapped him or whatever. And his son was walking down the street, and broad daylight, shot him in the street. Didn't kill him. Picked him up. Put him in a van. Nobody heard from him. Damn, crazy. And the cops like, you can't do nothing. Can't out there. do nothing. Bro, you can't do you can't do nothing out there. Yeah. And then another story was we was uh the they was fighting over territory out there. I forgot what city we was in, man. And this is when I was in the LMBP. And I guess one of the cartels like dumped some bodies under like a like a overpass. So they jumped some bodies or whatever, heads and all that stuff, like so they had to clean it up and they was like and they told us and we don't know no better, like we ain't in trouble, like it's a club, and we got to walk under the tunnel. Damn. So as we walking under the tunnel, they didn't pick up all the pieces. So it was like brains on the Jesus. floor. Like, <laughs> it was crazy. And it was like, yo, yeah. Sheesh. They didn't, like, it was, and, and the thing about Mexico, bro, like, you know, I hear, like, if you open a newspaper up, you're not going to see, like, nothing, like, hard. Like, if you see a car accident, it'd be like, hey, car accident, and, and, in South Phoenix, yada yada, somebody killed in South Phoenix yeah. is just writing. Mm -hmm. You open the newspaper in, in, in Mexico, bro, you see a dead <laughs> body in the, in oh the front of it. I swear, like, and holy shit. It, 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 they, they very, like, graphic out there. Graphic. Because they want you to see that. Like, yo, yeah. don't come out here fucking around because yeah. this is what's going to happen to you. Yeah. Like, in the States, like, it happens, but they cover it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Out there, like, it's loud. Like, you open, like, mafia and it is, like, damn. Yeah, it's. And that's what I'm saying, like, but besides that, like, if you, like I said, if you stay in your lane and play basketball and don't look for that stuff, you like, good. you good, like, and they tell you, and you know, you know which women belong to, to the cartel. Yeah. They, jury, all that, fake booties, all Lido's alone, like, mm -hmm. there's too many women in this world to be worried about that. Yeah. Like, Y'all can have that. Yeah. Because as soon as you cross that line, bro, they don't play about their women out there. Shit, they'll They'll slice your yeah. fucking head off. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy out there. But I love Mexico, man. Like That's dope. Hell yeah, yeah man. Well, shit, man. We going to wrap it up, man. Uh, incredible stories, man. Appreciate An incredible it. career, man. You know, um, you know, it's a pleasure to hear all the experiences that you have been through, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I want to I wanna end with, you know, if somebody's coming up out in South Phoenix, somebody coming out. Um, as a basketball player in Cali, anywhere, you know, in the West Coast, Southwest, 
and they they trying to have a, a illustrious journeyman career you know playing basketball for a living man for you know 10 plus years mm. making a living what advice do you have to somebody that wants to make basketball their career sacrifice man like you mm. got to sacrifice a lot of stuff that people don't want to sacrifice you know what i mean like going to the clubs partying and trying to get all the girls and stuff like that like you got to do stuff that people ain't willing to do go work out when nobody watching mm. you know what i'm saying surround yourself around people that that want want to see you do good you know what i mean like you see a lot of kids out here that's like real, real talented, and then they getting distracted by somebody else that they with that ain't half as talented as them, and they like, oh, I want to do what they doing. Like, nah, mm-hmm. you should go pursue your career and bring them with you instead of going that way. You know what I mean? But like, just staying focused, man, and and listen to people that's that's been through it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of these kids, you can't talk to these kids now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? All of them want to talk back and you mm-hmm. like even when I go to the basketball court now it's more talking than playing mm-hmm. you know what I mean and I, I just think a lot of a lot of, it's a lot of talent in Arizona you know what I mean and, and and Arizona it's hard to get exposure in Arizona well now it's better because a lot of internet and yeah. prep schools and like that but us growing up like your relationship with somebody can go a long way mm-hmm. you know what I mean like me and you having a good relationship and 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 your son coming up and he he good at basketball but you don't know nobody or you ain't got no connection you come to hey check my son out okay hey i know somebody that might he might fit it's just bas- basketball is a community you mm-hmm. know what i mean like and if you respect everybody in the basketball community it's gonna open a lot of more doors than than you did if you're trying to act like the hard guy or the tough guy or mm-hmm. you know what i mean like it's just like keeping respectful relationships because like you said like a lot of these people that's in the league or get opportunities come from somebody else that see you that you have no idea that he said something to this dude. And, mm-hmm. it, and it can go the other way. Me and you get into it, and you're like, hey, man, like, his son is good. Man, his dad an asshole. Mm-hmm. I don't think you want to deal with his dad. And, and it's and it's stuff that goes on like that, and people don't realize that. Like, mm-hmm. So carry yourself with respect, man. Respect your elders. Mm-hmm. Work hard. You know what I'm saying? Watch the crowd you're hanging around with. Uh and and a lot of kids nowadays they like to just skip like change schools, yeah. stick it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like stick it out. Like like change schools if you feel like you're not doing good in school or you're distracted. Don't change school because a coach not playing you. Like a lot of players don't play their freshman year. You know what I mean? Like going there that made me want to work. When a coach don't play me, it made me want to work harder. Mm-hmm. I don't blame like oh he didn't like me. When you get to a certain stage, you're gonna realize a lot of coaches don't like you. Mm-hmm. But once you get on that court and you perform, they got to respect you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, just my words to, like, the youth and anybody that's trying to do something, even on the south side, like, you got to be able to separate yourself from, like, the streets. You know what I mean? It ain't always about who the hardest out there. In the long run, it's who, who working the hardest. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, all this, I'm the tough guy, I got the girls, and that ain't going to get you where you want to go. Facts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to go out there and get it. Like, working hard, running the mountain, getting shots up, spend extra time in the gym, lead on video games alone. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, the same passion you got for the video games you got to have for basketball. And exactly. Like, a lot of people don't do that. Exactly. That's 100 right there. That's 1,000 right there. Shit, that's some great advice for all the young hoopers that's watching, all the young athletes that's watching AZ Way Too Active. You know, listen to Davin White, you feel me? That's some real game right there for sure. So, uh, you know what I mean? We're going to wrap it up there, man. Davin White in the building, man. Appreciate you, man. A basketball, you know what I mean, pro out here. You know what I mean? Been doing it for a long time. Appreciate you coming on Appreciate the show, it, man. Feel Appreciate me? We got to having. chop it about your experiences. Y'all tap in, man. AZ Way Too Active. It's your boy Staz, the Italian Stallion, a.k.a. ESPN Staz. Because I'm bringing it to you like a highlight, you feel me? Davin White's in the building, and we out this bitch. Peace. Peace. Yo.